We are coming up now on two months until the release of Wheel of Time Season 2 on Amazon Prime. We've been getting more and more information coming out about the season, and we've been getting some leaked information on Season 3 that has a lot of people talking. Today, we are going to break down all of the big news about the Wheel of Time, including a famous actress tied to the show, some released first-look pictures that give us quite a bit to talk about, and then we'll discuss the impact of some things going on in the industry right now with the Writers Guild, the Screen Actors Guild, that may impact season two and season three of the show and oh yeah we got a major casting announcement on a character that you definitely want to know about so let's dive in so before getting into the news Take a moment and like the video, and of course, subscribe to the channel to be updated when I release new Wheel of Time content. There's quite a bit coming here in the near future with Season 2 on the horizon, and you don't want to miss a bit of it. It only takes a couple seconds, so smash that like button and subscribe if you want more content. And as always, you can check the level of spoilers here in the corner as we discuss the news, but let's get to it. A few weeks back, WattSeries.com dropped a bombshell about a potential actress for Wheel of Time Season 3. Way back in 2021, Shore Agadashlu was the target of quite a bit of fan casting for the series, specifically for Cad Swain Malydrin, the domineering and powerful Aes Sedai who shows up first in the Crown of Swords. It got to the point that she tweeted, Shore, at Rafe Judkins, the showrunner for the Wheel of Time, saying that fans said they needed to talk. Rafe replied, publicly saying that they would talk and that she had been on his mood board for a certain character since 2018. Then we didn't hear much. That in of itself was pretty fun as a fan to watch that fan casting potentially turning into a reality, but the recent news has a lot of people, including me, quite excited. So Shore Agadashu was reported to be on the set of Wheel of Time Season 3, specifically at a set filmed at a castle in the Czech Republic. She was also spotted in Prague, also in the Czech Republic, but not at the same location as the previous filming. Now, does that mean she's officially cast in the show? No, but it's pretty damn likely, and she'd be a great fit as well. So for those that are not aware, Shore Agadashlu is an Iranian-American actress with a career that has spanned decades. She's given a number of incredible performances over the years. She was nominated for an Oscar as Best Supporting Actress for her work in the movie House of Sand and Fog in 2003. She won the Emmy Award for Outstanding Supporting Actress for her work on House of Saddam. And she was nominated for a Satellite Award for Best Supporting Actress in her work on 24. But recently, she is most known for playing Christian Abersarala on The Expanse, a role that won her a lot of acclaim. And, at least to my eyes, the character of Christian is the reason why many see her as being Cad Swain. So, Shore Agadashlu is for sure playing Cad Swain then. As Lee Corso would say, not so fast, my friend. Cad Swain is still a certainly a possibility, but there are some circumstances that lead me to believe that she is likely playing somebody else. Nothing will be for sure until it's confirmed, but let's talk about some evidence. Let's first start with the set that she was seen filming at. The set is a castle that I'm not even going to begin to try to pronounce. Here are some shots of that castle, which is beautiful. On these sets, it has been reported that there were white lion banners on display, which if you know your Wheel of Time banners well, that means Andor. This is likely the royal palace in Andor. That being said, they only shot there briefly, and as WattSeries.com is reporting, the castle is more than 200 kilometers away from Jordan Studios. So it isn't likely that they're going to be shooting there frequently, which makes me believe that we won't see the Royal Palace a ton in Season 3. Also, we know she was in Prague, where Jordan Studios is located and where the White Tower sets are located. The last thing to consider here is, is that season three is set to be devoted as a fairly close adaptation of The Shadow Rising. We've heard time and time again from Rave Judkins that they are having to make larger changes in season two to get everybody in the right places to make the season three adaptation of The Shadow Rising more close to the events of the books. While all of that evidence sounds circumstantial, it leads to a couple options for Shori's potential role in the show. Cad Swain, the role that she was originally fan cast to be at, is still on the table. I think she'd be great in that role. But I think it's far less likely. Cad Swain being a part of season three would mean she's entering the show far earlier than she did in the books. Not that it's not possible, but if you combine that with the fact that she's supposed to be in Camelin, a location that she never goes to once in the books, it makes Cad Swain a less likely option. The most likely option, and the one I would be willing to bet on, is that Shore is playing none other than Elida do Avrinia Royhan. So let me explain. One of the major events of The Shadow Rising is the drama in the Tower and the deposing of Swan Sanche. We do know that we get Camelin in Season 3, so it would follow that we would get an introduction to Elida's character 
as the advisor to Morgase Tricant. Morgase could send Elida off to the tower or even banish her from Camelin under the influence of a mysterious man who has become her lover. Either way, Elida returns to the tower mid-season three and tries to track down what happened to Elaine and what has Morgase so pissed off. I'd even imagine we get a flashback to a younger Elida having a foretelling as a cold open to tie her to the Andorran royal line. In the process of finding out what happened to Elaine, Elida will lead the charge to depose Swan. All of that would seem to fit with what we know. So my lean right now is that Shore Agadashu will be playing Elida. Not to mention, the actress that many, including me, thought might have been playing Elida in season two was just as announced as being somebody else. So let me know what you think of Shore as Elida in the comments of the video. So for a while now, we have known that British actress Natasha O'Keefe would be a part of Wheel of Time season two. We just had no idea who she'd be playing which obviously led to quite a bit of speculation as to who that would be. My pick at the time was between Elida and Lanfear, and I think most people were thinking along similar lines, but I had kind of settled on Elida. Well, it looks like I was wrong. Just last week, Watseries.com discovered that Natasha's CV had been updated to indicate her role in season two, and it was not Elida. Natasha O'Keefe is playing Lanfear in Wheel of Time season two. Now, Natasha is probably most famous for playing Lizzie Stark on Peaky Blinders. It's an amazing show. Everybody should watch it. This is one of those roles to me, along with Galad, that I think are impossible for a casting director to please everybody. I think Natasha is beautiful. And I think if you've seen Peaky Blinders, which, as I said, is a great show, you have no doubt that she'll be great as Lanfear. She's amazing in that show. I think that whenever you cast someone who is described as the most beautiful person to ever walk the planet, so much of beauty is subjective and you are bound to have some people questioning that higher. I think that people need to remember that it is more important to have an incredible actress than it is to have a supermodel for the role. And again, Natasha is beautiful. So I think there's bound to be people disgruntled about the choice as well as Galad whenever we get Galad. But this does confirm that Lanfear is in season two, which brings up the question of whether or not she will be taking the role of Celine or if Lanfear is just Lanfear the whole time. My guess is that Celine isn't going to be a change in the way that she looks, but just a name that Lanfear might go by. I don't think it makes a ton of sense for them to change her appearance just from the perspective of getting viewers attached to the actress in a role. And that process is just kind of different uh, when you're reading a book. It's a lot easier to change the way they look in your head. So let me know your thoughts on this casting in the comments of the video. Before getting to the pictures released from the production, though, let me take a minute and mention the sponsor of the video, NordVPN. NordVPN is the world's number one VPN service. What the heck is a VPN enabler, you might ask? Well, a VPN is essentially a third party that sits between you and your internet service provider and the rest of the internet. It protects you from those that are tracking your location, your data, your browsing history. Did you know that your internet service provider likely tracks every site that you go to and every search you make on the internet? They often sell that data. A VPN can protect you from that, as well as give you the opportunity to fool Netflix or Disney Plus into thinking that you're in another country and give you access to content that they are only showing there. VPNs are incredibly necessary if you are a user of the internet, and the good news is, is that they're fairly cheap. The better news is, is that you can get one even cheaper by clicking the link in the description of the video. Sign up for NordVPN service, and you will not only help support this channel, but you will also protect yourself on the internet. So let's get back to the video. So what Wednesday continues, despite Rafe Judkins being radio silent due to the Writers Guild strike. Amazon released a series of pictures from season two with a look at some of the characters. So let's go ahead and break them down. The first of them that we're going to look at was my favorite of the bunch, but primarily because I wanted to see a bit more of crazed Perrin. In this picture, you can see Perrin covered in blood with yellow eyes and quite a determined look on his face. This look says that he's about to rip some people apart. And obviously his eyes are yellow here, but it doesn't appear that they're going to be all season. There are still other pics of them previously that we've seen where his eyes are their normal brown. I'd be curious if they're going to just have the yellow eyes show up when Perrin is being super wolfy, or if the transition doesn't really happen until later in the season and most of the time in the season he's got brown eyes. It'll be interesting to see how they're playing that out. Another thing of note in this picture, though, is the shield that Perrin is holding. This is the same one as the Shinaran shields that we see the other Shinarans carrying in the teaser video from last year. 
Another thing that I'm curious about with Perrin's arc is whether or not he waits until the end of the season to kind of unleash his inner beast, I guess is a way of putting it. If you remember, he's sort of on a way of the leaf kick after offing his wife in season one and then having his run in with the Tinkers. There are shots of him carrying a sword in the teaser clip, so it's questionable, especially if Elias Machira speaks some sense into him earlier in the season. Either way, I love the intensity of Perrin's eyes in this picture. And I'm really hoping his arc picks up beyond just moping about like he did in season one. The next picture is this shot of the Wonder Girls holding lanterns. And there's a lot to break down in this shot. So in the picture, we have Madeline Madden as Egwene, Zoe Robbins as Nynaeve, and newcomer Kier Coveney as Elaine Tricand. They're all holding lanterns in what appears to be like the cavernous basement of the White Tower or something like that. So a couple things to point out here. First... Egwene and Elaine are wearing novice dresses, completely in white. Nynaeve has apparently passed her acceptive test by this point because you can see her dress has colors around the wrists and are probably taking the place of the colored hems of the dresses. This change is likely a very practical one. The idea of shooting the entirety of somebody's body all the time to show that they're an accepted and not a novice, that's not very practical at all. It's much easier to see their sleeves than their feet. But the other thing that we see here is a great serpent ring on her left hand. And it doesn't appear that there's a stone in it, or at least that I can see. So it's possible that the stones only come once you've been raised to full Aes Sedai. Of course, that does bring up the question of whether or not they're even going to try to pretend to be Aes Sedai. Because, again, how do you pretend when you don't have the stone? Another thing of note here, though, is that they're all carrying lanterns, which implies that they're about to go on a journey. They have bags packed and they're looking very apprehensively at somebody. My guess is, is that this is right before they leave for Falma and they're staring at Leandrin. The one thing I love about Zoe's acting, though, is that she's able to convey a level of concern and protectiveness through her stares. Right here, she looks like a combination of scared, defensive, and ready to pounce. I think that encapsulates Nynaeve perfectly. So I love Zoe as Nynaeve, by the way. In terms of where they are, my best guess is, is that this is like a tunnel or area in Tarvalon or in the White Tower where they can discreetly get away with Leandrin. I don't think they're in Falma yet. There's a level of seriousness on their faces that says they're apprehensive about what they're about to do. And obviously they look like they're about ready to travel. So this next pick is of our boy Lan. Unfortunately, it's not of his ass in the bath with Moraine, but we'll talk about it anyway. We can see the sword on his back and his Hidori around his hair. I love that they have leaned into the Japanese themes here for Lan, as I always kind of pictured him that way when I was reading. In terms of where he is in this picture, that I don't know. But the tree above his head does look like, uh, who am I kidding? It doesn't tell us much of anything. But if I had to guess, I'm saying this is taking place in Kyrian. We know that he and Moraine are going to go there. So maybe this is from that trip. We don't got a lot to go on here. This pick is of Matt and the last one that we'll be taking a look at. And it raises quite a few questions to me. So first of all, this is Donald Finn as Matt, hanging out in his nasty clothes and looking like he hasn't shaved in a week or so or bathed for that matter. He appears to be wearing the same stuff uh, as he was in the previous pic we saw of him in the White Tower and what he was wearing when he was separated from the group in episode seven of season one. So what's interesting here is that the background at least appears to be the same as the scenery in Falm. So it's possible that this isn't the same place, but that shade of tan looks a lot like the other shots of Falma that we've seen, which is obviously cool because that means Matt is there to blow the Horn of Valir, right? But what's odd is that he still looks like garbage. Did he not get any new clothing in the tower? Why is he legit wearing the same exact thing that he was, especially considering there should be a decent time jump between season one and season two? He didn't change his clothes in months. It'll be interesting to see Matt's storyline because he is the biggest difference between season one and season two. So it's hard to say what he'll be doing. So that's something I'm actually really interested to find out. Let me know what you think of the pictures in the comments of the video. So you may or may not have noticed, but Rafe Judkins, the showrunner for The Wheel of Time, has been conspicuously absent from social media and from promotion of The Wheel of Time which could come across odd considering the show is coming out in almost two months. Well, in case you are not aware, the Writers Guild of America is currently on strike, attempting to get better wages and compensation. Rafe is a member of the WGA, so naturally, he's absent right now. You may have noticed this spoken about elsewhere as many shows and studios are putting things on hold as the writers are on strike. Now, I'm no expert on the strike or the issues at play here, but I would typically support those that do the work more than those that pay them. But... There is another strike that may be coming. The Screen Actors Guild is also in negotiation with studios currently. They are set to go on strike in July as their current contract expires on June 30th. So what would that mean for the Wheel of Time? Well, a couple things. It won't affect season two in the sense that it's already filmed, it's already completed. 
but it would stop filming on season three completely, even more so than the writer's strike has. Season three could be delayed, which is not a good sign for a show that's already taking quite a while given the amount of material it has to adapt and how many years it's going to take. Additionally, in past strikes by the Screen Actors Guild, performers have not come to industry events like the Oscars or the Emmys or even premieres for their shows. It's likely that there would not be a premiere for a season two. It's also not likely that many of the actors would do anything with promotional material after that time. For example, Comic-Con is in late July, so it's not likely that any of the cast would be present for Comic-Con in person. Now, they might be able to show pre-recorded things, but nothing live. And that's not a for sure. And it's not a for sure that there will even be a strike at this point. But the fact that there's no deal yet, it remains a possibility. So what effect might this have on season two? Well, it's not going to delay the launch of the show. It may just mean that we get less of the cast promoting the show on social media or at events and that they rely a little bit more on traditional advertising like showing clips and stuff. We may not see them live at Comic-Con or we may not see them showing up for after shows or things like that. Uh, we're certainly going to have to wait and see. Let me know what you think of the possibility of a strike in the comments of the video. So with the possibility of a Screen Actors Guild strike and, of course, the WGA strike already going on simultaneously, when can we reasonably expect a trailer for season two? Well, I think there's a number of likely times, but the one that stands out to me the most would be San Diego Comic Con sometime between July 20th and July 23rd of 2023. It puts them out about a month before the show, and if they're not going to have the cast available, I would imagine their draw at Comic Con might be the trailer. Now, a couple things here. For season one, there was a teaser trailer released and then another main trailer. They would be releasing a main trailer or a teaser on its own a month before the release. Maybe they'll have time to release another trailer in their marketing blitz, but I'm really curious how all of it's going to play out trying to get multiple trailers out in a month. Let me know what you think of that in the comments of the video and when you think the trailer might drop. So that is all of the news. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell if you want to know more about Wheel of Time content as it comes out. I'll have a ton of it coming here in the near future. WatCon is also coming up, so I'm going to be super busy with that, but I may have some stuff from that to talk about here as well. Huge thank you to my patrons. You make this channel possible, and I appreciate all of you with all of my heart. If you'd like to become one of those lovely people, click the link in the description of the video and check out my Patreon account. If you like this video, you might like one of these ones here as well. Thank you for watching, and until next time, peace out.